evening. I'm Jeff Koinange, and this is Jeff Koinange Live. And if you know, if it's Thursday, it's all about inspiration. What a guest we have for you tonight. A few months ago, he actually invited me on his show on the competition station. We had a fantastic time, but this is not just about reciprocation. kono. This is a guy with an amazing story of inspiration, and you're going to love it. Growing up in Siaya County, no less. And his dream was to be a priest. Father Larry. Oh my. <laughs> Ended up, his first job in this business was working for a vernacular radio station. Kikuyu, no less. He's from CIA, remember? The station was owned by Nakata chairman John Mutudo, who still owes him money. But that's another story. <laughs> Did that. Then from there, the rest, as they say, is history. Worked for KTN, worked for us for a while. Did an amazing job. From there, he went to CNBC, South Africa, Kenya, back and forth, back and forth. And he decided home, east is west, east, west, home is best. Now, he's a superstar on another station, on NTV, you all know him. He's a technology and online editor. He's also an anchor, weekend act anchor, and anchors a particular program called The Trend. So tonight's hashtag, you can use The Trend, because the man himself, Larry M M M <laughs> I'll get it, I'll get Try it. Try that again, okay, try that sorry, again, sorry. okay. Larry <laughs> Madowo. Larry Madowo is on the bench. What an intro. Oh my. What an intro. Twitter handle at Larry Madowo. At Larry Madowo. At Queen Anger Jeff. Hashtag trend. JKL, whatever you want to use. But you guys, listen now. He's 27 years old. Oh, now you've given it away. And he, who, he is who he is. Good to see you, Larry. It's very good to see you too. You know, I'm 22 years older than you. I just want to put that out there. My, you moved to New York. Yes. After having already had an entire life. Yes. Before seven days before I was born, I read your book. I read your book. July excellent seven. book, by the way. July. Everybody, go read his book. Oh, sweet man, sweet. Through his African eyes, yeah. excellent book. July, so you, July, July seven, seven. nineteen eighty-seven. I was born on July fourteenth. A week later. A week later. Bastille Day. You had had an entire life before I was born. Hello. Look at that. And you've caught up. You. I haven't. <laughs> I haven't caught up. Let me explain. Let I'm me explain. trying. Allow me to explain. Mm -hmm. I call Larry. And I say, let's show up 9.15, we can do makeup, we'll get ready, we'll chat, the whole thing. He shows up with an entire entourage. I thought it was Sonko who showed up. Makeup, a guy holding an umbrella, <laughs> guy holding lights, camera. I mean, it look, looks like the trend has taken over. You must show up with an entourage, Jeff. You don't just show up alone. I showed up like, alone at your like place. Nobody does that. Nobody told You're me. not of this generation. <laughs> <laughs> So I showed up with Tony Iro, who does my makeup. Right. One of the best in this great business. Great guy, great guy. Great guy. He's got make, he's got shampoo, he's got gel. The whole one. You think it'll work on my hair? Um, we'll fix that in a moment. <laughs> <laughs> and then I showed up with Isaiah Maganga, one of the best photographers in this business. Look at that. You got your own team. Do you have the Sonko rescue team outside as well? Um, if it was legal, I would. Oh. So Larry, take me back. <laughs> you wanted to grow up to be a priest. I did, indeed. This was your thing. You thought this was your calling. No, come to think of it. You would have invited me here as Father Larry Madowo. <laughs> and I like the sound of that. Father Larry. Father Larry Madowo. Father, forgive me for I have sinned. It's been three months since my last confession. Or in your case, it's been 22 years. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> so that was my dream growing up. I wanted to be a priest. So I did go to a Catholic seminary. It exists. St. Gabriel Seminary in Kisumu. That's where you went? That, that's where are, I went. Are there pictures? Are there pictures of you in priest yeah, garb? Yeah, the whole thing. Were you an altar boy? I was an altar boy. I served with the bishop and the priests. Did the whole church thing. The whole shebang. Can, can, can I ask you why? It was my ambition. Like, his, growing up in the village, the priest was the one person who really had status in society. Like, he turned up and old women... Um, <laughs> they knelt down. They knelt down yes. and they treated him with, with such reverence. And I was like, I'd like to be that guy. Because in my little world, the priest was sort of the most powerful, most influential person. I'm like, I can be that guy. And then, they were close to God. So, hotline to God, easy entry to heaven. <laughs> it seems perfect, right? Okay, are you still religious? I am religious. I'm not a Catholic anymore. You're not a Catholic. I'm, okay. I'm, a, I'm born again. 
Okay. I'm saved. F from what? <laughs> <laughs> I am a religious person. I believe in God. I believe in Jesus Christ. I go to church every Sunday. You do. Speaking of which, yes. I heard you spend a couple of hours at Mavuno last weekend. Yes. On stage. On stage. Quoting chapters. So here's the thing. I have spent the rest of my life trying to run away from the pulpit because I did, right? I right. thought I would, have, I would have ended up a priest. Yes. But Pastor Simon Bevy calls me and he's like, hey, listen, I have this uh, message. They're calling it crime scene investigation. CSI. CSI Jerusalem. Yeah. And I'd like for you to come and ask questions like an investigator. I'm like, oh, that's what I excel in. I ask questions. I don't really know anything in the world. All I do is ask questions. Correct. The sillier, the better. So I'm like, I'll show up. <laughs> And so, yes, um, I, I heard you had a blast. I had so much fun with Pastor Simon. Yeah, great guy. Yeah. Great guy. He, he's Simon. excellent, right? Really, really good. Yeah. Inspiring. And, you know, the boy child, you know, that whole thing he, he does. He does Man Enough, which is a great project. Enough, right yeah. enough. Well done. Larry, um, you know, there are people who, d I didn't know this, so mm. I'm sure there's millions of Kenyans who didn't know this. Right. So at what point did you turn the corner and say, maybe this is not me? So here's the thing. Um, when I was in high school, the seminary, I used to co correspond with consolata missionaries. I wanted to be a missionary because I love traveling. So I, I like the idea of being in Colombia and then the other time you're in Papua New Guinea or whatever. So I wanted to be a missionary priest. Mm -hmm. And I used to correspond with the consolata missionaries and they used to get back to me and say, hey, listen, we'd love for you to join us when you're done. By the time I got to Form 4, I wasn't too sure about that. So I stopped corresponding with them. <laughs> yeah. I'm, they, I'm sorry. Do they still I'm, call you? Um, they don't call me anymore. <laughs> I changed my email. <laughs> And you never showed up at Consolata. And I, and I never showed up at Consolata. Yeah. So by form four, I was sure maybe this was not the thing for me. So I had, I was more inclined towards being a lawyer because I love to argue, um, have a big mouth, so I talk a lot. So it seemed the kind of thing for me. Yeah. Um, but I ended up in journalism. <laughs> you can't make this stuff up. So you quit the priesthood yes. or the, the road to the On priesthood. The road to the priesthood. Yep. You say law is not really for me. No. Journalism. So you do your thing, mm -hmm. and you end up with your first job at a Kikuyu radio station. My first job in broadcast, not my first job. My in, first in, in broadcast. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Because you left CI and came to Nairobi. Yes. Go on. Go on. Go on. So I left CI and came to Nairobi, and here's the thing that happened. So I'd convinced Fred Afune, who runs uh, radio for Royal Media, that uh, they just started um, YFM. Then it was called now Hot 96, mm. and they used to doing this shank thing going on. It was so cool. I'd convinced him. You should give me a job because I'm good. I went for an interview and failed <laughs> spectacularly. It was no. embarrassing. No. Really bad. Larry failed an interview. I failed the interview. They said, don't call us, we'll call yeah. you. And they never did. They haven't called today. I'm still waiting for that call. <laughs> so here's the thing. Yeah. So I have failed this interview badly. I'm, it's, I'm, I'm embarrassed. I'm, I'm in Nairobi at my aunt's place. It's like, wow, what am I going to do? So my aunt runs a small kiosk in Gikomba, the big sprawling market. And she sells tea and uh, mandazis and uh, porridge to the people who work there. Mm -hmm. So I go and help her out for a few months, maybe almost a year, actually. Come on. People buy mandazi and chai for 10 bob, and sometimes they take it on credit. Come on. Yes. So that's, that was technically my first job. Because so, at the end of the day and at the end of the week, she'd give me something. So, you know, I'm, I'm drawing a correlation with me here. There's, a, there's mm -hmm. a correlation because, you know, I was a flight attendant. Right. I was serving people, mm -hmm. but, you know, it was 39,000 feet. Yeah. You're, so in, you're, in, waiter. you're in Gikomba. Exactly. Down in the dirt and the dust of Gikomba interacting with people every day and that taught me confidence because I sat there thinking no I'm too good for this but I'm like no if I was good for this I would be somewhere else <laughs> but this is where I'm at in life right now so I might as well you know, own it were you cool about it were you were you okay with after a while I was cool I was cool about it I was happy to help out I was happy to develop relationships with these people and the people I still know to date really yes and do they remember you some of them do and they were like you used to be um, Victoria's kid here I'm like yeah, yeah that's me yeah they still That's owe you me. 10 bob. Some of them still owe me money. Lipeni, <laughs> <laughs> by the way, I'll tell you your story. Speaking of money, yes. I, sorry to cut you off and to go off topic, but we have to discuss money. Oh, yes, right? we need to discuss money. A moment ago, like mm -hmm. a few minutes before the show, f former Deputy Speaker Farah Malim mm -hmm. walked into the set. Yeah. And two weeks ago, he was on the show and he said, look, I'm gonna, I want to help out the, the, the GSU soldier mm -hmm. who was mm -hmm. killed in Garissa. Yes. And he says, I want to give him 100,000 shillings. He's been trying to get in touch with his dad. People mm -hmm. have been trying to call. Yeah. We haven't been able to get in touch with his dad. So a right. few minutes ago, he showed up. With a word of notes. A word of notes. And I counted. Yeah. I counted, right? It, it sounds right. It sounds 100. It sounds 100. It sounds 100. This is what Corporal Tanui. Corporal Tanui. Yes. The hero. 
He hero gave of his Garissa. Life, yes. Gave his in life Garissa. for those kids. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In fact, he was going to arrest the guy. Uh, the, so the story goes. Yeah. Yeah. And when he went to do that, the guy blew himself up and, and killed Tanui in the process. But obviously the family has been, you know. And here's the embarrassing thing, which you know. is um, one of his colleagues, Modern Core on Twitter, had to fundraise to try and give the family something. So Farah Marlin has given 100,000 shillings, which I, Larry, you're the witness. I saw the witness, yes. Will make sure that Tanui's father mm -hmm. gets the cash, okay? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Should and he's promised to do a fundraiser. Correct, with you and me. We will do this fundraiser together. So you, me, mm -hmm. and Farah Marlin yes. will do a fundraiser because he's got three kids. He's right? got three really young kids. 11, 9, and 5. Mm -hmm. So are we together with that? Yes, absolutely. A collab? A collab. Done. Sort Consider of like, uh, you know... Music collab, you know, like... Yeah. Um, but I'm the main artist featuring you. <laughs> <laughs> so this collab is Larry Mido featuring Jeff Menange. No. See? It's, it's, Father it seems Larry. only right. Father Larry. Father Larry, if you, if you prefer. That's okay. I like that. I'm down for that. <laughs> Speaking of money, is there any other monies maybe I owe you? My man. Ma you know... <laughs> so we had a bet. We had a bet. On the trend. Which you rigged. Hey. hey. So here's the thing. Go to Isaac Hassan, man. Um, I might need to bring in Isaac Hassan here. So Jeff comes on my show and says, um, whoever is the first to get to 500,000 followers gets to donate 20,000 shillings to charity. You said 10,000. Yeah. I said let's double it. Okay. But you were already 20,000 followers ahead of me. You didn't. So there was no way I was going to win it anyway. This is true. However, because I'm an honorable man, and people from my village are honorable people, in the, Siaya County. In the great county of Siaya, yes. I brought the money. Oh my goodness. So where is this going to? You, you picked a charity. I did pick a charity, and I have this a name This is 20,000, Bob. Really? Yes. Really? Look Keep at him, talking. he's going to count it. Yeah, yeah. He's going to a charity of yeah. Jeff's choice. Whoa, he's really good at this. Look at that. Whoa, this is crazy right now. Too short. Get out of here. <laughs> 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 so 20,000 yes. goes to the charity that I picked, yes. which I will tell you about in a moment. I have it, uh, you know, I have okay. my guys on it. Mutahin Gunyi owes us money. Mutahin Gunyi said he will also throw in 20. Because he thinks I don't read. I read a book every week. Do you really? Yes. English? English. And sometimes Swahili. You see, when you gave me your book, I, it took me several weeks to get to it because yes. I had a backlog of books correct. I had to read. Correct, correct. So because of that, Mutahin Gunyi owes us what? 20,000. 20,000 Bob. And anybody else who wants to contribute at this yes. point, you know, yeah. we're happy to donate to charity. Yes, absolutely. Thank you, Larry. You're a gentleman. Thank gentleman. you so much. Good man. You won fairly. Did you, want, did you like the book? The book was really good. Honestly? You write very well. And you have, had, you have such an incredible story. It's a... How did you remember all those details? I kept a log throughout the years. Kept a log, you know, notes, 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 notes. Is that notes. something you suggest people should do? Yes. Because you have incredible experiences and sometimes Correct. after three, few years you yeah. don't remember. You really forget. Yeah. I can remember the stuff I did last week. You remember week. names and dates yes. and places. Yes. Very important. Very important. For somebody who travels that regularly, surely you, you, you would forget these Absolutely. things. Absolutely. If mm. someone is interested in writing a book, I'm uh -huh. sure you will. Dates, names, events. And just, mm -hmm. you know, summarize. Right. One line. Mm -hmm. Cote d'Ivoire met, you know, Hassan and Musa, whatever, mm -hmm. whatever. Okay. Did this. One line. Later on, it'll make sense because it all comes together. Right, right. That's very, very useful. Thank you, brother. Thank you very much. My pleasure. So we're back in Gikomba. Okay. T, Mandazis, the whole shebang. Mm -hmm. Are you getting pissed off? Are you frustrated? Are you saying, where's my life going? In a sense, I am. But I'm also grateful for the learning experience this is, which is teaching me about patience, um, teaching me about God's timing, but also teaching me that, listen, you need to have bigger dreams than this. So eventually I decided, okay, listen, I'm thinking I'm going to go to Daystar. Because, and here's the real, the real truth, at the time I really admired Louis Otieno. Oh, yeah. And Lillian Mully, both of whom were at KTN. And they were really the biggest people in the business at the time. Louis Otieno Live. Louis Otieno Live was a big deal. LOL. Law. <laughs> <laughs> so I registered Daystar, and I can't really afford it because I don't, have no, I don't have any money. Yes. So here's the background. I lost my dad when I was seven years old. I lost my mom when I was 14 years old. I have a um, younger sister, five years younger than me, whom I love to bits. And she really helped me become an adult. I mean, capable of being an adult on my own. Was it just two of you? Just the two of us. So here I am, out of school. I don't have anybody to go to for money. And uh, I want to go to Daystar, which is fairly expensive. And a kid sister to take care of? Yes. Um, so I register, and my, pa my family comes together, and they pay my first semester, which is all they can afford, because they never paid another cent again. Um, so I went for the first semester. I registered in Nathi River, day scholar. 
And then the money ran out. So the, another, the next semester I went in. But did I you do well the first exams. semester? I, yeah, I did well. You did okay? I did okay. Yeah. I did, got a few A's. Um, then the second, second semester, I went in, but I didn't do exams because I didn't have money. Mm. Third semester as well. Mm. This is really starting to get to me. Like, why am I here? So I said, listen, I'm going to try and do something. So I started writing, freelance writing gigs, online um, portals, magazines here and abroad, writing letters to the editor, mm -hmm. The Nation, The Standard, mm -hmm. everybody published my pieces. Are you getting paid? I'm getting paid small bits of money, but it's really giving me a sense that maybe there might be something in this for me, this whole journalism thing. Fine, I want to do it. I don't know how to get in there. My ambition is to work for KTN because KTN is the biggest thing in yeah. television. It's Larry's there, Lillian's there. Yeah. At the, at the time, um, Esther Runga was there. Wow. Esther Runga was a big deal. Had Jeff Koenig left? Jeff Koenig had left. Jeff Koenig was flying high at CNN at the time. Carry on. So, <laughs> he likes that. I should just keep <laughs> saying Jeff Koenig <laughs> and good things. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, after a while, I drop out because this is not making any sense. Oh, no. I keep doing exams. I, I keep going to class, but I can't do exams because they I haven't allow you. my fees. Right. Which is the only way they can make sure that people who, uh, people pay their fees, right? So I drop out and I start um, doing freelance writing gigs and whatnot. Somewhere in the middle of that, I started doing this uh, supermarket promotions. You know, these guys will stop you in the, on the supermarket aisle and say, hey, today we have a promotion for yes, Dettol. I see them you all the time. One, They're very annoying. And here's the thing. People will ignore you. Like you say, hi. Yeah. And they just you walk keep right walking. past you. Yes. Yes. And you've had... So here's the thing. You get an hour off at lunchtime, like, let's say 1 to 2 p.m. But otherwise you're here from 8.30 when the supermarket opens until when it closes at 8.30 speaking to people and 60 percent of them ignoring you oh. and you have a target to meet oh. you must sell at least this many number of cans or uh, cigarettes yeah. or whatever so, so note to self next time i see someone in the please house, listen to them they are starting out and they're struggling and they're trying to make something out of themselves there's some woman at uh, village market mm -hmm. nakuman yeah selling nutella nutella yes what am i going to do with nutella buy it anyway donate it to someone oh. buy it because that's how they're going to make the living thank you and they paid me 300 bob at the end of the day 300 bob. Three sock. Three sock. I have to go all the way. I, at, once, at one point, I was at Junction. So you have to take a mat to Tao and then a mat to Junction. So oh. back and forth, you've made, maybe used 120 bob, lunch 70 bob. So how much are you left with? It's one sock. Yes. So moja. So moja. Both. But you have to do it because you need to do, you need to do something with yourself. Oh, my goodness. Anyway, so at some point in school, one of these guys, the ladies tells me, listen, um, there's a new station called Bahasha FM, and they're hiring interns. I was like, OK. I don't really speak Ikuyu. It's like, no, we need a news, an English news anchor. I'm like, okay, that sounds fine. So I went, I did the interview, and they hired me. Go on. So the lead up to the news. The lead up to the news. Yeah, yeah. There used to be this really deep, deep voiced guy called <laughs> yeah. Gotham Wangi. Yes. Who is telling the business, by the way? Uh -huh. He'd be like, uh, at the end of the news, he'd be like, Ogo Nego Kore. But at the very top, yes. this is the one that leads into the news. Yes. There's some dramatic soundtrack. They'd right. be like, Mohoro Mwaki Mwaki. <laughs> <laughs> that means very hot news. <laughs> and then at the end of the news, be like, Ogo ne wokore. Ogo ne wokore. <laughs> and then the, 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 the section for the station is that, Bahasha FM, Ngwatani Ronomo. So then you'd read the English news. Then I'd read the English news. Right. And then the, all the intros and outros are in Kikuyu. Did you have fun? I had so much fun there. I learned a lot of Kikuyu there. Mm -hmm. I understand Kikuyu. I speak enough Kikuyu to get by. Just from that experience. Look at that. But yes. the owner owes you money. Now, here's the thing. The station was owned by... Nakade Chairman. Nakade Chairman John, John Mutugo. Mutugo. It was run by... Good guy, by the way. Great guy. Excellent guy. And Gadonio Mushomba, mm -hmm. who was the biggest thing in Kikuyu Radio at that point. Um, she used to do the breakfast show. And so at the end of uh, January 31st, 2008, they're like, now you see the post-election violence is here. We're not really making money as a business, so we can't afford to let you guys um, keep working here. And you know how they fired us? One day at the end of, I used to have a business block between four and like four or ten. Mm -hmm. So after that, they said, oh, kuna barua yako kwa reception. So I pass by the reception and I'm, I pick up the letters, I go away. Yes. Then I'm like, oh, this is, re this is it? <laughs> That's it? <laughs> it's over. Really, nobody had the, ch had the courage to tell it to me, in, to oh my face? Oh, my God. That's it. You're kidding me. There is, uh, John Mutudo still owes me money. How much? Um, 60K. Chairman? Yes, he's gotten the point. I so think that, yes. I've interviewed him a few times, but I've never really told him. <laughs> <laughs> and he knows you work for him. I don't even think he does, but he should know. No, yes, he does. He does. He's watching. He, Chairman he's, and yes. Pesa. 
We can donate that money to charity. If he gives it, will you donate it to your charity? Oh, my man. 60,000 bob is a lot of money. Should oh. we account for inflation? That was 2008. So times, let's say... Let's just round it off to a nice yeah. round figure of 100,000. Yeah. 100. Sounds fair to me. German, to my soul. Who is that to me, Jeff, by the way? You don't have to give it to me. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh at the end of this, so you, you, you've been laid honest. off. I've been laid off. And post election is happening. Post election violence is happening. Times are tough. Nobody's hiring. Nobody's hiring. Nobody's hiring. The country's in crisis. What am I going to do? I'm not in school because I can't afford it. So, two months, I do a, a few more freelance writing gigs. And then again, another connection from school says, hey, KTN is hiring interns. I'm like, oh, but they only want fourth years. I'm like, technically, my first year. So I don't really qualify. And but I've never been on TV. I've never, I had never, at the, until that point, I had never been inside a TV studio. Never, ever. Come on. True story. So what'd you do? But I show up anyway. You said, I'm going. I'm going to go. So there's people from USIU in fourth year. There's people from Daystar in fourth year. And there's people from uh, University of Nairobi in fourth year. Then there's this. Uh, there's Larry. Who has never been on TV. Has not done a single TV unit. But I'm here anyway. Yes. Anyway, long story short, we did a bunch of interviews, um, did screen tests, did voice tests. First time in, my, in, in, the, in the TV studio, so at the, at the point we're recording it, I tell those guys, if I don't get this job, can I keep this tape? Uh -huh. Just like, you know, for my home library. You're real, yeah, you're yeah, real. I'd just love to keep this, mm -hmm. because I was in the KTN studio. This is kind of a big deal. It's huge. It's huge. Have you seen any superstars walking around, milling around? Have you seen like, anybody? I, I walk into the newsroom and, like, there's Beatrice Marshall oh. just minding her business there. Oh. How crazy is this? Huge, Lena Seca is here. Huge. And everybody who's who They're all looked there. up to. Even Okedi. Even Okedi. Well, Okedi was not bad. <laughs> Okay, this is an excellent director. Yeah, he's great. great, great. Okay. So, yeah. eventually, um, the HR calls us at that time, and there's only three of us left. Myself, Mahia Muto, who works at CCTV mm -hmm. now, and Wukis Nyabwa, who works at um, Across the Competition. Three of you? There's three of us left. And, in fact, she was like, are you really 18? Like, are we going to be hiring a minor? I'm like, no, 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 I'm 20. It's like, okay, good. So, yeah, we're going to give you a trainee reporter's job. I'm like, are you kidding me? They did hire me. What about the other two? As a trainee reporter, the, the three of us. So okay. me, myself, Mahia Muto, and Wukis Nyabwa. Wow. So basically, we're glorified interns, but we, wouldn't, we couldn't care less. We get paid. How did you feel, Larry? We get paid. How do you I feel? Like, that's just crazy. My ambition for doing broadcast, my ambition for going to Daystar was to work for KTN, and here I am. Already? Even having, fail, having dropped out of school. Not dropped out, you just couldn't afford well, it. Well, I couldn't afford yeah, it, yeah, so yeah. yeah, I was out. But here I am, they gave me a job. It took me a week of getting hired. It took me a whole week before I gathered courage to go and speak to Esther Runga. Because in my head, she was a little goddess. Correct. Like, you don't just approach. No. How dare you? How dare you? It's like I, approaching me. I, I, that's not like approaching Jeff. Yeah, You'd be like, that? my God. <laughs> <laughs> I need to give some respectable distance up in here. <laughs> so, was she okay? Was she? She was really lovely, yeah. and we became really good friends. Wow. Wow. She mentored me. She was really um, kind to me. And that's why it's been so painful to see her go through all this yeah, experience. Shame, shame, huh? And I've tried reaching out a number of times, but the Esther I knew at KTN, the Esther who I last spoke to planning her yeah, wedding, yeah. is not the Esther who's we, we see who now. we see every day. Or, uh, She's not uh, the same person. Shame. I don't know what happened. Yeah, life, life happened. I don't know what happened there. So, Larry, in the meantime, are you going out doing stories? Are you out there reporting? Are you... So I come in and Farida Karone, who used to run Katie at the time, tells mm. me, um, now there's somebody who just left the business desk. We're going to take you to business. I'm like, uh, but I don't have a degree in economics or finance or any of these things. I'm like, a guy. So this is it. You take it or leave it. So do you want to work for us or do you want to go and do your kind of reporting? So I'm like, okay, I'll take it. Starting so you're, from scratch. You're no longer an intern. I'm, not, I'm, I'm, I'm a glorified intern, glorified. trainee reporter, but yeah. my position is on the business desk. So I go in and have to start from zero. Luckily, at the Katian business desk, they had this excellent team of people. Cynthia Nyamai mm. was there. Is that right? Yes. Cynthia Nyamai used to be on the Katian business desk. She bullied me, but she really helped me out. <laughs> <laughs> and this desk had like um, Samuel Kantai, who works at CCTV now, and Peter Wakab, and all these great guys who came in and took me this little, little brother of theirs, and they taught me everything I know. And they were patient with me, and they corrected me in over this almost three years. Wow. 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 Okay, D. We're going to take a break. I want to come back and talk more about I mean, this is, I mean, I'm getting inspired. I'm uh, the little kid I'm just from a guy. The little kid from CIA. Yeah, the little boy from CIA. How far is your village from Kogelo? Um, we are neighboring now. Here's, how did I not lead with this? <laughs> I should have led with this. My village, Barding and Kogelo are ba basically neighbors. Bar like, ba bar what? Barding. How do you spell that? B-A-R-D-I-N-G. Okay, just it's, There's a national school in my village. 
Um, What's it called? It's called Baradine Secondary. Of course, it's got to be named after the village. What so, else could so it be named So you and Obama, your, your... Obama and I, we could have shared the same river. We could have shared the same river. You could have peed in the same river? We could have peed in the same river. My grandmother and her grandmother, like, are buddies, they hang out. <laughs> <laughs> so when he comes... When he comes, he needs to go and build a Simba to start with. Okay. You know, cause, like, every Luo man that comes of age needs to build a Simba. And he, we are concerned that he hasn't built that. <laughs> <laughs> So when he comes here, he obviously needs to go home. But you're going to hang out with him. I mean, you, you have to be there. I know people who know people. <laughs> <laughs> who will get you in the room. Who will have to get me into the room. Yeah. So it's between you and me, Jeff. Have you seen the Twitter webs? I've seen the Twitter webs. Yes. Oh, it's tough. It's on. But you know what, Larry? I always say on this show, it's not about me. Look at him trying to be modest. <laughs> okay? Okay, let's talk when I interview Obama. <laughs> <laughs> if you do that, you're dead. Oh, oh, really? You're another bet? Be... You're another bet? Let's bet. Who interviews Obama? Yes. 100,000. Done. To a charity? To a charity. Okedi's going to add another 10K. Okedi's going to add another 10K. Anyone else? Awesome. No, go, going once. I, 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 Isaiah. Tony? <laughs> 10K? 10K. Isaiah. Right, 120 already. Anybody else? <laughs> what is this? Hebron, At 3K. <laughs> We've got 123K. 123K. For whoever interviews Obama between you and me. It's on. Like Donkey Kong. It's on like a switch. <laughs> <laughs> what a character, folks. My goodness. Larry Majawa Where did you talk about that when we come back? All right, when we come back. Whoa! 27 years old. What a story. What a kid. What a superstar. Keep going, please keep going. I'm listening. <laughs> keep tweeting at Larry Madowo at Je Koinanga Jeff. The hashtag, The Trend. Why not? Give the kid a chance. After all, I'm going to win some money. <laughs> all over again. J.K.L. takes a break. We'll be back in a moment.